How do we pronounce these two words? Are they the same or different? Do you confuse the pronunciation of these two words? How about the meaning? Are you able to use them correctly? And how about these two words? And these two words are pronounced the same even though the spelling is different. One of them is with an AR and the other one with an ER. And do you know what they mean? Let's learn some English words that can be confusing even to native speakers. Some of these words have the same pronunciation and very similar spelling, but with completely different meanings. You will be able to pronounce them perfectly and you will be able to use them accurately. And then at the end of the video, I will give you a quiz to test your knowledge to see how many of these you remember. Okay, let's get started. Let's look at these two words. Native speakers often confuse them. Let's make sure you know the meaning. Do you know the difference in the meaning between these two words? Let's pronounce them correctly first. Weary, wary. Let's say that again. Weary, wary. To be weary means to be physically or mentally exhausted, to be very tired or even bored, especially because you have been doing something for a long time. For example, you can say, the long hours of studying left me feeling weary. I'm weary from too much work. And now let's look at wary. To be wary means to be cautious. If you are wary, you are careful because you think something dangerous or harmful might happen. For example, you can say, I'm wary of driving in the snowstorm. Or we can say, we must teach children to be wary of strangers. You should be very wary of giving people your bank account information. Let's look at the next two words. Do you know the difference in meaning between these two words? Misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is incorrect information and it's often unintentional. It's not on purpose. You simply made a mistake and you gave someone the wrong information. Or you can say you misinformed them. The rumor about the celebrity's death was misinformation. She's alive and well. And disinformation is also incorrect information, but it's not a mistake. It's given in order to hide the truth or to manipulate people, and especially in political situations. For example, you can say, the government was accused of spreading disinformation to influence public opinion. Or you can say, I don't believe this article, this newspaper article is filled with disinformation. Let's learn the difference between these two words, childish and childlike. Which one is it better to be? Is it better to be childish or childlike? If you're childish, you're immature or silly. For example, you can say, his childish behavior during the meeting was very inappropriate. Or stop being so childish, grow up, don't be so childish. He is a grown man, but he still acts childish. And let's look at childlike. That has a more positive meaning. For example, if someone is innocent like a child or enthusiastic and very easily excited about something like a child. For example, you can say, she has a childlike innocence or despite his age, he maintained a childlike enthusiasm for Disneyland. He was excited about it just like a child. So remember, Childish usually has a negative connotation and childlike usually has a positive connotation. Are you using these two words correctly? Do you know the difference in meaning? How about the pronunciation difference? Most native speakers pronounce these two words exactly the same. Effect, effect. The second syllable is stressed in both of those words, therefore the A and the E are reduced. A, uh, effect, effect. Some native speakers sometimes say effect, for example, the effect of something, but it's more common to hear native speakers say effect. Let's look at the difference in meaning. To affect is a verb. It means to influence or to produce a change in something. For example, we can say eating junk food will affect your health or her words deeply affected him. Don't let it affect you. And that means don't let it bother you. Don't let it affect you. And now let's look at this word, effect. 
This one is a noun, and it means a change that is a result of an action. We often say, to have an effect on. The medication didn't have any effect on my symptoms. Or we can say, her parents' divorce had a big effect on her. It had a negative effect on her. Let's compare these two sentences. How did it affect you? Or, what kind of effect did it have on you? Let's look at these two words. Are they pronounced the same or are they pronounced differently? They're pronounced exactly the same even though one is spelled with an E and the other one is spelled with an I. They're both pronounced complement. We use to complement when something goes well with something else or to make something perfect, to make it better, to make it complete. We can say, that scarf complements your outfit. Red wine complements beef. And now, let's look at the word complement when it's spelled with the letter I. When you say something nice to someone, you compliment them. You praise them. For example, you look lovely in that dress. I love your hairstyle. Everybody loves a compliment. She received a compliment on her presentation skills. Or you can say, her boss complimented her. You can use it as both a verb or a noun. Let's look at these two words. Are they pronounced the same or are they pronounced differently? How about the meaning? Do you know what they mean? They're pronounced exactly the same. We reduce the A of principal. We don't say principal. We say principal. So it's the same as the other word, principal. Let's look at the first meaning. A principal is a head of a school or the director of a school or someone in a leadership position. We can say, he's a high school principal. And let's look at the other meaning of principal. Make sure you spell it correctly. It's spelled with an L-E. And a principal is a moral rule or a belief about what is right and what is wrong. And your principles influence how you behave. For example, we can say, we try to teach our children a set of principles. Or you can say, I won't do that. That's against my principles. Or you can say, he's got no principles at all. These words are commonly confused. Do you know the meaning? How about the pronunciation? They're pronounced exactly the same. Dual, dual. Let's look at the first meaning. Dual means involving two parts or two elements or two aspects. For example, we can say, the smartphone has a dual camera system. Or, some people have a dual citizenship a dual nationality, and some people have a dual personality. They change a lot. They're two different people. Or you can use it like this. She has a dual role at the school. She's an English teacher and a principal. And let's look at the other meaning of dual. And that means a fight with weapons between two people, and it's usually used to settle an argument. And this is something people did in the past. They had a duel with weapons. He challenged his rival to a duel. These two words are commonly confused. They're pronounced exactly the same. Counsel. Do you know the meaning? Let's look at the first word. Counsel is advice or guidance, typically given formally, such as legal advice. For example, you can say, the lawyer provided counsel to the defendant. Or, she sought counsel from her mentor before making a major career decision. And let's look at the other meaning of counsel. And make sure you spell it with a C-I-L and not with an S-E-L. And that means a group of people that are chosen to make rules or to make laws or decisions. For example, the city council. I attended the city council meetings. Or for example, the student council. The student council organized the event. Sometimes canvas is spelled with one S and sometimes it's spelled with a double S. Same pronunciation, different meanings. Let's look at the first meaning. A canvas is a strong, durable material, a strong fabric that's used for tents or for paintings. It also refers to a painting surface. It's a strong cloth used to make bags or shoes or tents. For example, we can say, the artist stretched the canvas tightly on the wooden frame. This is a canvas by Cezanne. I bought a canvas bag. I bought a canvas tote bag. And let's look at another meaning of canvas. This one has a double S and this one is a verb, to canvas. And the past tense is 
canvassed. And the continuous form is canvassing. When a politician wants to win an election, he tries to persuade people to support him. And he goes to them and he talks to them. He is canvassing and sometimes volunteers canvass the neighborhood. They go door to door. They are canvassing. For example, we can say the volunteers canvassed the neighborhood before the election. It also means to ask people about something in order to get their opinion or to get information. For example, you can say the police canvassed the neighborhood looking for witnesses. So remember, if canvas has one S, it's a noun. And if it has two S's, it's a verb. And the meanings are very different. How do we pronounce these two words? Is the pronunciation the same or different? It's exactly the same, but the meanings, of course, are very different. Stationary, stationary. Let's look at the first meaning. It's spelled with A-R-Y. If something is stationary, it's not moving. It's staying in one place or in the same position. For example, you can say, I like to ride the stationary bike. The bicycle isn't moving. Or you can say, a stationary vehicle was blocking the road. So the vehicle, the car or the truck, was not moving. It was stationary. And let's look at the other meaning of stationary. This one is spelled with E-R-Y. Stationary is writing material, such as paper, pens, envelopes, and other office supplies. You can say, she has personalized stationery. The company logo was printed on all of the stationery. And now it's time for your review quiz. Let's see how many of these words you remember. I will give you two options and you decide whether it's A or B. Which word means a group of people who make rules or laws? Is it A or B? It's B. Council. Council. Same pronunciation for both A and B. Let's go on to the next question. Which word means something that consists of two parts? They're both pronounced as dual. Is it A or B? B. D-U-A-L. Dual. Let's go on to the next question. What do we try to teach our children? For example, when we teach them what is right and what is wrong. How do we spell that? The correct answer is A. It's spelled with L-E-S, principles. Let's look at the next question. If I say to you, that lipstick is perfect for your skin, that color complements your skin tone perfectly, which word do we use, A or B? A, complement with an E. To complement is to go together well, to match well. So your lipstick complements your skin. But if I say, I love your lipstick, I'm giving you a compliment. So if you answered with the other one, in a way, you're also correct. But if I say it complements you, it means it looks good on you. That blouse complements you. If I say, she's feeling very tired from working hard, is she feeling weary or is she feeling wary? What's the correct answer? The correct answer is A, weary, weary. She's very weary. And do you remember what wary means? Wary means to be cautious, to be careful about something. Let's look at the next question. If I say, I read an article in the newspaper and I think they didn't want to tell me the truth about what really happened. Was that misinformation or disinformation? What's the correct answer? The correct answer is B, disinformation. Let's go on to the next one. If I say, don't take this medication, it has a lot of negative, what, A or B? They're both pronounced as effects. It has a lot of negative, the answer is B, effects with an E. It has a lot of negative effects. The medication has a lot of side effects. Let's go on to the next question. If I say, this bicycle doesn't move, this bike is stationary, how do we spell it? Is it A or B? The correct answer is A, stationary with the letter A. How did you do on the quiz? 
If you made a few mistakes, that's completely understandable. These are difficult, and keep in mind that native speakers make some of these mistakes also. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. Take your English to the final level of fluency with my online courses. The American Accent Course, the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English Course, and the Phrasal Verbs for Fluent English Course. Go to AccurateEnglish.com.